To make sure there's nothing wrong with the seal on the door, the engineer runs a pressurization test. He's looking for a leak. So explain again how you tested the pressure. I went into the cockpit, I turned the pressurization switch to manual. Switching digital pressure control unit from auto to manual. The jet's engines are turned off, so the engineer uses the plane's auxiliary power unit to force air into the cabin. It's like looking for a leak in a tire. In this case, what you're having to do is pressurize the aircraft, use a, bar a barometer essentially to monitor the pressure inside, uh, and look for leaks that way. A normally well-maintained jetliner of any age uh, is simply not going to be completely, uh, completely airtight. You're going to have leaks. As a matter of fact, as pilots, we know that uh, certain airplanes are going to leak more than others, and you've really got to crank the pressurization up. After completing the pressurization test, the ground engineer reports that the jet is in good working order. But the digital pressure control is left in the manual position. They were supposed to return uh, the uh, selector to the auto position. If the flight crew fails to see that the switch is on manual, their plane won't properly pressurize. The oxygen available inside the plane will be just as thin as the outside atmosphere. The passengers will be directly exposed to a deadly environment in which they cannot survive. August the 14th, 2005. The worst airline disaster in Greek history has stunned the nation. Investigators are sifting through the gruesome wreckage. A few minutes after nine in the morning, Helios Flight 522 left from Cyprus, bound for Athens. The crew has no idea that hours before takeoff during a maintenance test, a flight engineer has left a pressurization switch set to manual. Both the captain and co-pilot miss the fact that the plane is not set to pressurize automatically. As Helios 522 climbs, an alarm blares in the cockpit. What is it? The takeoff config warning? It's a non-pressurization warning, but it sounds identical to another alarm. The pilots confuse the two. It's a critical mistake. The alarm sounded, and that alarm was misinterpreted. Most of flight crew, they will never face uh, an alarm with no pressurization in all their uh, flight career because it's a rare event. Operations, this is flight 522, over. Flight 522, what can I do for you? We have a takeoff config warning on. Sorry, can you repeat? As the pilots troubleshoot with ground engineers, life-sustaining oxygen is slowly seeping out of the plane. Eventually, oxygen masks drop in the cabin they do not fall in the cockpit. The reason that we don't have automatically deploying oxygen masks in a cockpit is simply too much up there, and if you had things popping out, they're going to hit switches that they shouldn't hit. The crew don't realize they have a pressurization problem. Eventually, both the captain and the co-pilot collapse unconscious. The oxygen is too thin to breathe. We're the ones that should be trained consistently to understand that ears popping anything that indicates pressurization you don't even talk to each other before you grab that mask and put it on the passengers are unaware that the plane is now flying itself in emergency situations chemical generators above the seats pump out oxygen but there's a catch these generators only produce enough oxygen for about 12 minutes well, the problem with the passenger masks is, for one thing, they're not designed to keep you oxygenated at a, at a high altitude. What they're designed to do is give you enough oxygen so that you can survive until you can, the pilots get the airplane down to a low altitude. But with both pilots already unconscious, the Helios jet did not descend so passengers could breathe without assistance. Instead, the plane flew on autopilot to Athens. When the oxygen supply stopped, 
the passengers passed out. By the time the Greek Air Force intercepted the Helios jet, only one person was still moving. Likely surviving with bottled oxygen, flight attendant Andreas Prodromu was still conscious when the fighters approached. He made it to the cockpit, but he couldn't save the plane. Anthony Control, there is one person moving in the cockpit of Helios 522. Eventually, when its fuel ran out, Helios 522 crashed. Investigators eventually find the panel with the pressurization switch. Are you sure this is the way it was found? It hasn't been moved at all. All 121 people on the Helios flight died because their plane didn't carry enough life-sustaining oxygen as it climbed into the sky. It's been more than 50 years since the beginning of the passenger jet era. 50 years in which the industry has learned, sometimes painfully, how to safely fly more than 10 kilometers in the sky. When you look back at all the other accidents over the last 20 years, in most cases, we were pushing the frontier of knowledge. Unfortunately, when you're pushing the envelope, you're pushing the boundaries of design, you can encounter problems that you hadn't anticipated. In search of the safest plane imaginable, the history of aviation traces a flight path through tragic accidents to technological breakthroughs. Many of these accidents display the incredible power of explosive decompression. The Airbus A320 and every other passenger plane built today is infinitely safer than the first jets that flew in the 1950s. They have to remain safe and get even safer because we rely so heavily on this incredible mode of transportation that takes us somewhere we were never meant to be.